Hey there, Wolfpack fans. It's me again, Kenton Gibbs, with my main man, Grayson Boone, in the building. And we are going to talk some Baby T, who has announced his very unsurprising departure from Raleigh, as well as some players in the portal that could replace him. And we're going to talk all things midweek baseball on today's episode of Locked on Wolfpack. Grayson, you ready? I'm ready, and I'm unfortunately ready to say goodbye to Terquavion Smith, but it's a good goodbye. Absolutely, and you know what? We wish him all the best in where he goes, but I've got to tell you that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. So, folks, we're going to send Terquavion off. We're going to talk about potential replacements, and we'll get into some midweek baseball all in one episode. Stick around for it. On today's episode of Locked On Wolfpack. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Wolfpack fans. We have got to talk Baby T announcing he's leaving Raleigh for greener pastures in the NBA in a move that I some people were kind of surprised and upset by, but I was like, we barely got him back last year, folks. What did we what did we think was gonna happen? Especially after the explosion in the NCAA tournament. You know, had he had a poor game against Creighton, I would have been like, eh, it's a chance. But even then, the chances were very slim. However, we don't get him back. Grayson, your immediate thoughts on his departure. Yeah, you and I had talked about this a couple different times as the basketball season winded down on whether or not we thought he could use a third year to improve his draft stock or if he maybe felt like he had more to prove with the struggles he had. Ultimately, I think the majority of us probably saw this coming. Um, Absolutely. You, I think you could make the argument that he could benefit from coming back, but again, this, this is a situation we were already planning for especially in that there was a possibility that this would have happened uh, last year anyway. So it is it is a goodbye. Um, it's a little bit bittersweet being that he, he didn't maybe experience as much success as you would hope a player of his caliber would uh, during his time here in Raleigh. But that being said, he didn't have to come back for this year. And yeah. because he did, we made it back to March Madness. And that's something we haven't done in five years. And without him, if he if he enters the the draft like there was a possibility of last year, probably don't make it back to March Madness this year. To be quite honest with you, so he is he's been a an exceptional talent. He's been as hot and cold, I guess, as you could ask for, or kind of experience in a player. Um, the the highs, the lows, and everything in between. He's been a great ambassador for nc state he i i don't know if i've seen a player like truly embrace the the culture of nc state despite only being here for two short years yeah he, he talked a lot about how much he loved being here he even ribbed the other blue schools and saying you know you don't have to go to a basketball power in state to make a name for yourself and i just i appreciated everything he did on and off the court uh during his time here in raleigh Absolutely. And and when I look at Tecravion Smith, like you said, the Tecravion Smith experience was just amazing overall, right? When he was hot, there was nobody hotter. There was nobody better. And when he got cold, he could drop the temperature in the room by himself. No AC needed. But with that being said, one thing that you never questioned with Tecravion was his heart. How hard is he playing? Because I'm not going to point any fingers or say any names of any players who might have illegally been gotten to NC State. However, oh boy, it hasn't always been the case where we could look at our stars and say, even if they're struggling, you know that they're playing their heart off. Even if they're going through a tough time, you know that they're showing up, grinding, giving it everything that they got. Jacobian Smith is just, you know, he's the type of guy that when you watch him play, you can see just why. If had he stayed, he would have definitely become a, a leader on his team in a way that like is very significant in year three like he's a guy that you could follow in the war because again he gives the effort he gives the energy he gives all the things so with that being said what do you think his ceiling in the nba is 
Oh boy, that's a that's a little bit of a loaded question because you know if if he doesn't develop and I think quickly uh, through this draft process and wherever he does end up getting drafted or maybe even undrafted, we're we're gonna have to find out later down uh, the road here. But I think he can be kind of a microwave type score in the NBA. Maybe not so much a starter, but he can come in and you know six to eight minute bursts and give you a couple threes. Cause that's what he's basically become known for. Right. Um, I think that's probably his, his most likely uses in the NBA. I, I don't know if I see him being, you know, a nightly guy. I don't know if I see him be becoming, I guess like the face of a franchise type player. Um, but I think if all things fall together, if the chips fall in the right place, I think he can have a pretty solid NBA career just as kind of like a role player type guy. Now it might take a lot of coaching and a lot of mindset type things to usher him into that role because the baby T we have now is a showstopper. He's a playmaker and he's going to have to, he's going to have to work into a different kind of mindset because that I I just don't see him turning into that sort of player in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And you know, the game is much different in the NBA, the style of play, the the athletes they have at that level it's just it's a whole different ball game and i think if he continues the the style of play he has now then he could very quickly find himself in the g league or maybe he from our uh, our friend adam silver he might have to take a couple rosetta stone lessons and some chinese but we hope it doesn't make it that far because one thing nc state fans absolutely love is having representation in the professional sports leagues and in the NBA haven't had a whole lot of that of recently. It's been mainly uh, TJ Warren. I really, I truly, this, this will tell you how much that the whole situation irritated me with Dennis Smith. I really don't even like associating him with us, even though he is doing well now with the Hornets. Um, But yes, we're, we're looking for a guy to, to carry the torch and put on for NC State in the league, as it's something we haven't had a whole lot of uh, in the years recent. I see his ceiling as the guy that everybody compares him to a lot, and I'm sure that you know exactly who I'm talking about. Bones Highly. I see yeah. that being his ceiling. A solid six player comes in, gives you some instant offense. You run some sets for him. He's going to put up buckets. Um, but then other than that, you know, that's kind of that's kind of your lane. Um, again, to Quavian, never have to question his heart, never have to question his effort. Um, he's he's much longer than his height would imply. He's a guy that this year I think he showed at a high enough level to uh, intrigue scouts enough to take him somewhere back half of the first round or so with the ability to do other things when his shot wasn't falling. I think that he's done enough in that regard I don't know if he undid all of that work with how terrible February was, but I you know. I am a little bit of that opinion. I think I think his performance in the latter half of the year is probably going to land him in the second round um, if he does end up getting drafted. But I think he's shown enough potential over the last two years to intrigue the scouts enough to give him a long enough look that he does deserve a chance uh, in the league. But I just think there's just a lot of uncertainty that he showed kind of frequently, uh, especially this season, that maybe he's going to leave a whole lot of question marks come draft time. Well, listen, as a Pistons fan, Killian Hayes is in the NBA and playing big time minutes. Oh, man, that's a ricochet shot right there. Okay. And I'm going to tell you right now the worst effective field goal percentage in the league amongst qualifying players. I know Tequavian could do better. I watched the Pistons, I watched them. You might, you might got to get on the phone then. Let them know. And I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Hand to God, you could ask this player or Jeff Gravely or Brad Simmons, of uh, formerly of WRL, Jeff Gravely, who now works at NC State. Brad Simmons still at WRL. When I worked over there, uh, we had a little-known player out of Kansas named Devontae Graham in studio. And I looked at Mr. Graham and I said – Hopefully my Pistons have enough to draft you. I know you got the goods. I know you're going to do great things in the league. We did not have enough sense to draft him. And now look. Now look. 
we have Killian Hayes. So with that being said, um, yeah, I, I I think that uh, there's there's a place in the league for him. If you know, like you said, he works out some of those things and and kind of increases his consistency with the shot. I think that there's definitely a place for him. If he doesn't, yeah, the Shanghai Sharks are always looking for an electric score. You know what I mean? And I I hope that that's not his fate. I really do. Like, not even joking. <laughs> Jimmer Fredette could use a combo guard over there. Hey, listen. All right. <laughs> All right. The Mr. Mormon Moonshot himself needs a he needs a helper. He needs an assistant. So, you know. But but no, seriously, I think that uh, Jaquavian again, height of his powers. He's bone bones island. Everything goes right. He gets in the right situation. Floor? Yeah. That's a, you know, with all due respect, there's a pretty low floor here. But I I, I get it. I get why he's leaving. You know what I mean? It, this ain't a uh, situation like some other players in schools in the area where like, buddy, what you're making in NIL is the best you're going to do. You're never going to do any better. You better stay there and rack up those double doubles for the next five years because uh, you're – you're definitely learn some Mandarin, learn some Portuguese, learn some uh, Spanish, learn some. You're definitely not not NBA material. He's not that, but you know it's. I have uh, I have a couple more key thoughts I want to add in. Go ahead and oh, do the ad read though. I'll, I'll hit go those after. Okay, for sure, for sure. Well, again, you know we wish the Craven Smith the best, and, and I don't want anybody to construe this as us wishing negative on him or anything like that. We bring you no fluff pieces nor do we bring you hit pieces. We're telling you what we believe Jaquavion Smith is. And if you don't think that Bones Highland is having a good career, watch what happens to his next contract. I promise you, you will know that his career has been more than sufficient. Okay? Okay. All righty. But now I've got to talk to you all about FanDuel, folks. It is very simple, very easy, very clear what you need to do. The final four is here for the men and the women. The NBA play-in is on the way, which means the playoffs are on the way. The MLB, I'm sorry, not the MLB. uh, They're they're just about to get their season started here. I am telling you, you need to get in on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And that's because right now they're giving away a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000 to new users. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. And sign up to claim your no sweat first bet today. Then you can wager on everything from the money line, the point spreads, to which teams will be cutting down the net. All on that. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So make sure you don't miss out by going to fanduel.com slash lock on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. So, Grayson, let's talk for a minute about, you know, North Carolina is the hoop state. And so you were talking about just how many folks are in the transfer portal that are from or around the Raleigh area. Let's get into that a little bit. Cause like we just talked about, we're, or actually, no, no, no. You said you wanted to get off some key points. So go ahead. Get, get yes, off your key all right, two more things on Traquavion Smith. One, um, I, a little bit petty here, but I'm going to call t- into attention the, the Caleb Love situation at UNC. Mm-hmm. I hope that NC State fans will very briefly take a look up the street and see how that is being handled amongst the Carolina fans. Caleb Love is leaving, and their fans are simultaneously celebrating that he's leaving while also posting the shot of him uh, hitting the three over Mark Williams. And I don't think you can do both. I think that makes you a little bit fake. Mm-hmm. NC State fans, I hope you remember Terquavion Smith fondly, despite maybe his struggles and maybe not exactly reaching his potential, but I hope he is remembered as um, a guy that committed to us extremely early in the recruiting process, stayed true to us, wasn't swayed by you know the G League or any other schools. He's, he said early and said often, NC State hit me up first. I always respected that, and I'm going to give my all for NC State. What more could you want in a star player? And I think that is how he should be remembered. He should be remembered for being loyal, for taking us back to March Madness, and just being an NC State guy. And it's it's kind of been rare 
to see a player just rep us all the time as much as he did. So I think that is probably the number one thing I'll miss uh, the most about Terquavion Smith. And my second point here, I kind of mentioned it briefly. I think Keats needs to get some credit for being on Terquavion Smith super early. Like I said, I believe he offered him when he was, what, 16 years old? Mm -hmm. That is an incredible job at projecting his talent because he turned out to be one of the most exciting players we've had in quite some time here in Raleigh. So I do want Keats to get a little bit of credit there. Um, And this actually perfectly leads us into the next portion in talking about transfer portals because he's got to find a way to find maybe the next Terquavion Smith or so on similar. And like you said, a couple more names have come across in the last couple of days. The, this whole transfer portal thing is fascinating to watch because it's like every day you see a new name getting floated out there. The, the, literal, it, the literal only thing I don't like about the transfer portal, y'all don't have to make heartfelt messages. You don't need Bible verses to tell people like, hey, <laughs> they ain't playing me enough. You know what I mean? And shout out to a good friend of mine, Nia Simone, uh, who helped me with with this idea. Or actually, she was the original creator of this idea. But I just need this to go across the airways for more people to hear this. You don't need all that. Sometimes you can just say, hey, it's been real. It's been fun. It ain't been real fun. See y'all later. You know? And don't get me wrong. I'm not one of those guys like, when that player from Mississippi State said, since according to Coach Leafs, I'm not very tough, I'm going to go somewhere where they appreciate my time. I like that a lot more than Jeremiah 2019, 29 and 11, you know, for he knows the plans that he had. Baby, stop it. Stop it. For he knows I got to hit this portal. (laughs) He knows you got to hit the portal. Listen, leave leave the big man out of this, okay? There's a lot going on in the world. He's got some other things to worry about than you getting 10 minutes of, of playing time and three shots a game, okay? But proceed, Grayson. But anyway, yes, so... Since we last talked about this, we discussed Jack Clark leaving and how our shopping list gets a little bit longer. Now we have Traquavion Smith leaving. That, However, that was expected. But a couple interesting names I saw just in the last 24 hours, uh, one of which is DJ Horn, guard from Arizona State. Mm-hmm. He averaged 12.5 points, 3.4 rebounds, and 2.4 assists this year. He's used four years of eligibility. And Kenton, guess where he is from? I'm going to guess Raleigh. Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I've mentioned this before we jumped on here. It's been kind of bizarre how many players I've seen enter the portal that are from like the Raleigh area or from North Carolina, maybe from North Carolina, the school. And I get that that's a testament to North Carolina being the hoop state. But in this new era of the transfer portal and seeing all of these names floating around, with some sort of tie that we could possibly connect, you got to feel pretty good about Keats's ability to maybe reach out and make that easy connection. Hey, man, you're from Raleigh. We're in Raleigh, wouldn't you know it? How about you come check us out for for a weekend or something like that? Mom so, and Pop can come see you play every game. They can be right us. there. Come They'd see us. Right. We'll, we'll get Grandma and Grandpa. DJ Burns will tweet at them for every home game so they know when the game is. You got it all. What more could you want? He tweeted at everybody's grandma's sneaky link, which, by the way, I mean, if your grandma has a sneaky link, that's her business. But, but you know, uh, Mr. Elroy should have been at those games. He should have been at those games to see DJ finish it with the left hand because you knew it was coming every single right. time. But go ahead. So, yeah, so we had DJ Horn. Obviously, Arizona State made it into the dance there in March Madness. DJ Horn was on a NCAA tournament team averaging 12 and a half points. Mm-hmm. I think we could use a little bit of that. Absolutely. And then the second name I saw come across was Jaden Epps, a guard from Illinois. He averaged nine and a half points, one, uh, 1.8 rebounds, and 1.5 assists as just a freshman. Um, I, th- I believe he's originally from Suffolk, Virginia, but he spent some high school years in Charlotte. So another guy with North Carolina ties. I He's still want my lick back. I still want my lick back on Illinois for getting Genesis Bryan up off us. I still want my lick back. We ain't maybe even. So. Maybe, maybe they owe us one. We that, They owe us one. We ain't even. Because Genesis Bryan could have helped us out immensely this year. We ain't even fighting a lot. Now, nah, we own you. We own you. We watching you. Proceed. But, again, so two more big names. They're both guards. And 
we saw this year how important the guard play is uh, under right. the Keats's regime here. So two more names to keep an eye on. I'm sure the next time we talk about this, I'll have four or five more because of how wild this is. But a lot of a lot of interesting material starting to trickle in. So I'm excited to see kind of where the chips are going to fall because we haven't had any commits quite yet. Um, but I, I've been very anxious to watch. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I mean, I, this is a Power 5 opportunity that, again, we talked about you. We have the one thing in currency that's more valuable than anything else. It's more valuable than minutes. It's more valuable than natties. It's more valuable than anything you can name. We have shots available and a lot of them. Between Turquavian and um, between Turquavian and Jarkel alone, that's what, about 25, 30 shots a game? <laughs> At least. How, how many of those are from Jaquavion? 21 of them? I mean, I'm just saying, there's the shots are there. The shot attempts are going to be available. So, yes, not only are you going to play, you're going to be expected to be a significant contributor on the offensive load for this team. So, with that being said, again, there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity, okay? When I'm looking at the uh, – when I look at this team and, and their full numbers – you're absolutely right. There have there were a ton of shots. Between those two, 1,034 shots last year. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that one more time. Just between Jarkel and Jaquavian, a th- 1,034 shots in this last season. The shot that attempts mind blowing. Are there. The the shot attempts are there. The shot attempts are there. It's again, it's it's there. It's, I'm not going to tell you no lies now. I'm not going to tell you no lies. I'm sorry. It's 1,014 also. I was slightly off of my original calculation. 1,014. Either way, 1,000 shots between two players. Yeah. Yeah, there's some opportunity there. There's some opportunity. So we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors to land this thing. We will get Grayson talking some midweek baseball for you. And we're back. Grayson, we got a win over UNCG, 6-2. to two. Give us a recap. Give us a rundown. What happened? We got a win. Feels good to be back in the win column. Uh, another midweek game against UNCG. We saw them just a couple week it, uh, weeks ago, and that was the high-scoring affair where we escaped with a 15-13 win. This game was a lot more under control. We won by a score of 6-2. to two. Um, You know, I've mentioned this before. The midweek games are not exactly uh, high priority but you still want to get each and every one of them uh, as many as you can, especially Mm -hmm. against in-state midweek. And we got it done. Uh, We got it done on Tuesday. The pitching was great, which was a a little bit of a surprise, considering it was a little bit of a bullpen game. We didn't have a prototypical starter on the mound. We had Baker Nelson uh, start the game, and I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I was a little bit nervous. But he came out. And to the delight of all of us, he shoved. He he absolutely shoved. He he. I think he went three innings, four innings, and gave up virtually nothing. The the runs that they got were unearned, and the bullpen combined for zero unearned runs the entire day. Thirteen strikeouts amongst all of them. The offense again led by uh, Jacob Cozart, who who is I think I said last episode he was red hot. He is now upgraded to white hot. Three mm-hmm. more hits for Cozart. He's just unconscious right now. You cannot get the guy out. Um, he had a big day. Chase Nixon, another name I just mentioned the other day. He had a two-run double in the first inning that got us off to the races. Uh, Gino listen, Groover Chase, had another two hit. Chase playing his way into this starting lineup. Chase is playing is. his way into this starting lineup. It, somebody might have got yeah. Lou Gehrig out here. Somebody might have lost a spot for good now. Or not Lou Gehrig, but I guess Wally Pitt. Because for those of you who didn't know, there you go. Wally Pitt is the one who lost his position to Lou Gehrig. Then Lou Gehrig goes on to have that super long run. Anyway, somebody might have just got Wally Pitt here. Absolutely. So, yeah, like I mentioned uh, yesterday, you have their injuries to Noah Souls and Trevor Candelaria. And here comes Chase Nixon kind of uh, relishing his opportunity, and he's unconscious right now. He's think Before today, he was eight for his last 13 at the plate. He added another hit, a big double in the first inning. He's on fire, and Absolutely. it's going to be hard to keep a guy like that out of the lineup when your, I guess, starters, quote-unquote, come back. 
So I think it's going to be a little bit of a musical chair act when you have all the outfielders healthy again. But that speaks to the the depth you have at that position this year, which is a good problem to have. A great but problem. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was everything you could want in a midweek game. We took care of business. The offense showed itself. Eli Serrano hit a home run that I still don't think has landed yet. Um, oh. But just a solo home run, but it it provided a, quite a punch, uh, kind of the the nail in the coffin type feel. But um, and then lastly, just to wrap this up. I thought it was great that Rio Britton uh, was excellent out of the bullpen. He got the win in relief, and I think this is a relief appearance that he desperately needed because he was a big, uh, a big time transfer name coming into this year, and we were really hoping that he would, you could plug him into the bullpen, and he would be a horse for us. And he hasn't yet. He's he's struggled. My little pony big. situation. Been in my little a little bit, a us. little bit. You gotta, you gotta coerce him out of the gate. He, he don't mm-hmm. want to leave the gate, but get some sugar cubes down. Get some sugar. That's cubes right. Down. He he got his sugar yeah. cubes uh, on Tuesday. I'll tell you what, because he locked it down. I was very impressed with what I saw. He looked like a different Rio Britain. Um, and so hopefully this is the beginning of a strong second half of the year for him out of the bullpen. So I saw a lot of good things today. Very, uh, you know, I. I don't want to put too much attention on it, but there was one, uh, another outfield drop that was very irritating. It resulted in two runs being scored. Those are the two unearned runs. So again, like I mentioned, these small mistakes will compound on you very fast. But And you can make that mistake against UNCG. You can't make it against Louisville. Can't do it. No, you cannot. Yes. And like I said, yeah, Louisville's coming into town this weekend. They're ranked, I think it was either 11 or 12 in the country. You make that mistake against Louisville, they're going to make you pay even more than UNCG did. But all in all, good win on Tuesday, and we're looking forward to a gigantic opportunity here this weekend with Louisville coming into town. All righty. Well, folks, you heard it here, folks, a gigantic opportunity. We wish Baby T all the best. We hope that he gets that six-man role. And, hey, I'm not going to be mad if he exceeds our expectations. If he turns into an an all-star level player, hey, color me shocked, but I'm not going to be upset by that. Thank y'all so very much for coming out, Wolfpack Nation. We appreciate you every single time. Peace and love, y'all. As always, go Pack. Go Pack. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.